Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Sonic the Hedgehog here, aka the Blue Blur, aka Blue Justice, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos, as you probably expect at this point in time. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PC Steam, and finally the Nintendo Switch. So, last time, we've essentially did match able to almost completely done for everything for the sake of the forms of Amy Rose, for the sake of the forms we're trying to find not only for more skill points for certain Cocos, but also with the forms of certain map pieces here and there. In addition to that, we also did match able to play as Knuckles for a bit, for pretty much doing the exactly the same thing as for Amy, except the fact that, obviously, if you couldn't tell, that, uh, Obviously, I still need able to try and able to get used to with his uh, move sets, including buddy forms of his gliding as well. So everything else will be pretty much encountered for. So today, for this video, is that we're going to be able to exponentially. We can able to actually continue playing as Knuckles for a bit. Now, as a result, after that, we can pretty much going to have to able to take care of the forms of Tails. For the sake of the forms, we're trying to able to actually completely done for every single portion. For the sake of the forms of, you know, the alternative version of Aronos' Island for able to get its entire map completion. So because of that, although sometimes I will admit though right away, like I said before, is that doing this process is a bit of a really, really long time to able to try to able to... Oh, no, 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 no! Ah, oh, drat. The, I can't really, uh do this properly because I couldn't see because of the change of camera angles. Ah, oh, jeez, I was not expecting that, especially considering for the fact that it does that automatically every single time. So, anyways though, oh yeah, something's worth noting for, when it comes to the forms of for that particular points worth noting for, is that, um, as you can tell, on the top right corner of the screen, that we're now able to actually have ourselves on notification, saying about the fact that we need to proceed to the final battle, which, like I said before, we're not going to do that just yet, because obviously we need to take care of the forms of the true 100% completion, not just by the forms of the entire game, or should I say for the fact that not just by the forms of the Final Horizon DLC update, but also for the entire game as well. So because of that, I almost said things completely opposite all of a sudden. Well, mind you, no matter what though, it's been two days ago since we've last played this for sure. Just because no matter what though, I believe both Mighty and Ray are almost finishing up everything for the sake of the forms of Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, and exponentially by that time until specifically next Wednesday or something like that, maybe they'll able to actually finish up the entire playthrough of the game. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how long exactly though, just because no matter what though, like I said before, is that during at some point in during the forms have been next week, I've decided able to actually take a break on this game for a little while until specifically by the end of November, just in case we're able to celebrate the 25th anniversary of something related to the Powerpuff Girls uh, TV series, as far as you probably already expect to see what's coming. So, anyway though, so that will do, let's just go ahead and uh, continue exploring for a bit, and because of that, I just want to double check on certain uh, parts worth noting for, now, of course, like the forms of how it does it on a base game, is that, well, exponentially speaking, though, is that if you try to go after, uh, you know what I'm saying with the forms of Lookout Cocos, whenever you start this DLC up, uh, much like the forms of how it does it on a base game, you don't have to necessarily try to able to worry about, um, trying to complete the forms of certain cyberspace segments, because obviously, much like the base game, because it's, you know, essentially just trying to able to find a couple of those, uh, Lookout Cocos for able to try to able to create a side loop around that particular treasure icon and exponentially you could able to actually try to grab them from there. So because of that, no need to worry about just trying to able to actually go for these uh, very uh, tough obstacles for the sake of the forms of certain, uh, you know what I'm saying, the actual cyberspace segments from time to time. But uh, regardless of everything else though, is apart from the fact that I'm pretty certain it's about the fact that we pretty much at the halfway point uh, in terms of uh, completing everything, or should I say, managed able to explore um, certain stages for the sake of the forms of the cyberspace uh, segments in this particular version of this island. Well, 
To be more specifically though, where it comes to the forms of uh, playing for the stages as normally, and then also trying to able to complete certain missions throughout, but that can wait though, especially considering for the fact that like I said before, we will be back for this at some point and exactly towards the end of November, just in case we can able to actually easily caught up for the sake of the forms of the actual... Oh jeez, that was close. And in fact, no matter what though, because we have to deal with the forms of those little spinners, if you couldn't tell. And also, it doesn't help about the fact that you still need to be able to rely on the forms of rotating a camera a lot. But thankfully though, we did somehow manage to find on yet another map scan. So because of that, hopefully though, we should be able to actually almost completely done scanning through everything for the sake of the forms of this particular portion of this island. So, and hopefully though, we will be able to do the rest of it though. Assuming, of course, if we're able to decide able to take control of Sonic again, just for the sake of the forms of the maximum velocity, or should I say, the maximum impact for the likes of the forms of, you know, trying to able to deal with certain things quite easily with Sonic. So, and also stay applies with the forms of tackling for those cyberspace uh, segments for Sonic. So, either way, so we can able to actually upgrade some more skill points for Knuckles, so we can potentially try to able to go ahead and uh, start looking for them for the sake of the forms of the entire completionist run. So, so yeah, uh, for those of you probably wondering, yes, uh, today's day is of course the, uh, the 16th of November today, in some cases in 2023 today. Naturally speaking, though, apart from the fact that until tomorrow, after this video releases, is that the Super Mario RPG Remake it should be releasing until tomorrow. So because of that, I'm sure that most RPG fans will be pretty excited about this, especially myself included, especially concerning for the fact that, well, it's been a very long time since we actually able to actually get able to play Super Mario RPG ever since on the original Super Nintendo version. Mind you, the UK version of the original SNES cartridge version doesn't exist. Well, for what I found out, there was actually a fan-made uh, cartridge uh, version of the game, specifically in eBay. But uh, either way, despite the fact that it was custom made for the sake of the forms of the label and everything, because the reason why I say custom, because I don't think it's like a genuine version of it. I mean, mind you, it does look pretty cool to able to actually found out that we finally managed to able to see the custom made PAL cartridges version on the likes of not only for Super Mario RPG, but also say applies with uh, Kirby Streamland 3 as well, which are both on in the eBay website, for I've noticing that already. So, despite the fact that I'm probably not going to get those just yet, mainly because by this point in time, that I'm pretty much going to have to save up for the majority of 2024. Uh, upcoming Nintendo Switch stuff, and especially noticeable with, of course, we're about to be going into America until uh, next June. So because of that, still I'm pretty excited about this, and I'm sure that Mario and Luigi are both are going to be excited for that as well. So because of that, to able to actually explore around uh, the Super Nintendo world for the first time in person, and as a result, it should be a lot of fun. And especially noticeable, we can able to check out other theme parks here and there as well. Like, for instance, there is the forms of uh, Disneyland, and also say plus with the forms of other theme parks I was really interested of. But I'm sure we're able to actually find out more details about that particular topic until specifically in 2024 for next year. And that could be also applies to be able to, like, saving up for Mario vs. Donkey Kong Remake, and especially noticeable with Princess Peach Showtime. Maybe some other surprises for the sake of the forms of 2024 until specifically in the next couple of months or so. So because of that, so I'm pretty certain for the fact that we are basically done with Knuckles for now. So let's go ahead and switch over now to Tails. So just in case, we can now able to do some more stuff for Tails. Now I'm pretty sure for the fact that we basically fully managed able to 
um, learn specific uh, moves for uh, Knuckles now. So because of that, we are basically done with the skill tree for Knuckles. So I suppose the only thing is left right now is of course grinding for level ups. So, but that can wait though. That can t seriously able to be wait for. So. But anywho though, um, speaking of which though, when it comes to the forms of the actual uh, specific uh, things worth noting for, is that potentially speaking though, for what I can gather, maybe in Japan though, they decided able to actually do a double pack, seemingly for the sake of the forms of some time, and that's what appears to be buddy forms of, well, let's just say, both Super Mario Bros. Wonder and, especially noticeable, for Pikmin 4. So as a result, both of those games, as, as in a double pack, will be expected to be releasing on Japan only, as of now anyway, until the 6th of December. So because of that, yeah, I was expecting that that might be, seems to be the case though, but I'm sure we'll find out more details about that, until specifically, until likely on next month. So because of that, Speaking of the next month though, is that potentially speaking though, is that for what I've can gather, that uh, basically though we able to actually realize that we able to actually receive, not only for the sake of the forms of a Christmas special for Doctor Who at some point, but it's also for the fact that they revealed the title of that particular upcoming Christmas special until specifically next month. And as a result, that's going to be the first ever episode for Doctor Who that is actually the introduction to uh, the 15th Doctor. So because of that though, yeah, I'm very curious to able to notice what that seems to be the case. And the title of the episode is going to call it The Church on Ruby Road. So, kind of an interesting name, especially concerning for the fact that still, I'm very curious to check it out. So, real to be speaking though, also, is that I do somehow manage to able to realize is that, well, the anniversary special episodes, specifically uh, the Star Beast and Wild Blue Wonder, and as well as the Giggle episodes, respectively, I'm pretty sure that three of those episodes are basically is going to be able to be released on every single Saturdays, I'm presuming so anyway. Like, one of them is going to be releasing until uh, the 25th of November, so that's going to be on Saturday, of course. And then after that, it was the 2nd of December, and finally, the 9th of December. So because of that, still I'm pretty excited, able to see how the, uh, the 60th uh, um, anniversary, uh, specials as far as how it handles, so... But I'm sure enough, though, it'll be pretty exciting for my book. So because of that, yeah, I'm pretty much hyped about the forms of specific stuff for right now, so... Anywho, though... So, yeah, let's get to the forms of another topic at this point, is that, potentially speaking though, not only do we able to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this good old classic GameCube title, but also happy 20th anniversary of the character's existence since in 2003. The one I'm talking to, or should I say, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, happy 20th anniversary of the game's release of Mario Kart Double Dash, the fourth entry in the Mario Kart series, released specifically during the forms of the main Mario Kart games in particular, and also the second uh, console, uh, or oh, actually, kind of think about it, it was actually technically the third uh, home console Mario Kart game, believe it or not, because the first one is obviously the forms of Super Mario Kart, and the second being 64, but then in Super Circuit, it was actually the first handheld entry, so because of that, makes sense to me. So as a result, in addition with uh, Mario Kart Double Dash has now became 20 years old, God, I can't even believe it's been two decades ago since that game first came out, for the Nintendo GameCube, which is pretty insane, but also happy 20th birthday to Toadette herself, make her first appearance in Mario Kart Double Dash, so because of that, yeah, I'm sure we can able to actually celebrate the 20th birthday for Toadette, because let me tell you, Toadette, she was actually a pretty cute character, especially concerning for the fact that I always attempt able to be playing as her, well, not just by the forms of, you know, uh, certain platformers these days, ranging from new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, including Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and heck, even especially noticeable with Super Mario Maker 2, and on top of that, there was also, uh, the Mario Party games, despite the fact that she only becomes playable within like uh, five games in particular for Mario Party, ranging from Mario Party 6, 7, 8, 10, and Star Rush. So, but either way though, I always attempt able to play as her. 
during the course of the Mario Party games, including Mario Kart as well, ranging from, obviously, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and the Switch versions, and of course Mario Kart Tour, despite the fact that I just basically just give up playing uh, Mario Kart Tour these days, especially concerning for the fact that there's no nothing else we can do at this point, especially concerning for the fact that at this point in time, that the Animal Tour is almost approaching for its rerun. So even then, no time will tell, especially concerning maybe it's just Maybe if there's a possibility for me to able to actually finally get a chance to able to get a yet another uh, cosmetic character, but this time around though, would appear to be for Luigi or something like that. But again, time will tell, especially concerning for the fact that well, I have to wait until likely or so for the next uh, couple of uh, weeks or so, or perhaps even maybe that uh, I think relatively speaking though is that that particular Animal Tour rerun has already been came up just recently yesterday so yeah I've obviously have lost track of myself this at this point especially concerning for the fact that I still really don't care about that game that much just because of how frustrating that game can be even with the forms of some bad controls and such but at least thankfully we able to actually play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe more often just because my god, the DLC ends off with a best note, especially concerning, it's almost like the equivalent to the font of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, where it comes to DLC in mind, that uh, basically though, where it comes to DLC, it ends off with a really, really good banger, for the sake of the forms of some fans alike, especially concerning for the fact that in Smash Ultimate, that we finally get a chance to able to see Sora from Kingdom Hearts in the Super Smash Bros. game, which is pretty much epic in every way, and that can be also applies for Wii Rainbow Road has finally made its return in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with a glorious HD makeover, so because of that, yeah, I'm sure fans will be pretty much hyped for that, even especially no sport, it's been about um, I can't even believe by saying this, it's been about a week ago since we've last played uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, believe it or not, especially concerning for the fact that we now finally got Wave 6 since about a week ago, but I'm sure I can able to go back into the game more often for playing online matches, and heck, even especially noticeable if I decide to invite... When I scanned the skies earlier, I detected a similar reading in the ruins. Maybe there's something in the air. That would be a satellite placed in space by the ancients. There are multiple satellites positioned over a wide area. But why did they put them up there? There is evidence that the satellites were used to send some kind of authentication code. The columns of light you have seen above ground are all masses of electronic data. That must mean the Emerald Vaults opened when interacting with that light. It was receiving data to unlock them from the satellites. Well, I was gonna say is that I was expected to able to invite not only Shadow, but also Silver as well, for the sake of the forms of keep on playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for a very, very long time, even especially noticeable for the extensive amount of time, just because, well, the entire game is complete. So because of that, as we mentioned this countless amount of times already, let's just hope that we'll wait for the next Mario Kart game on the next console eventually. Looks like there are gimmicks hidden all over the place. What I want to know is, what was with that pinball in the volcano on Chaos Island? It's a part of a device that controls volcanic activity. When you turn on the switch at the top of the pinball, the volcano is activated and erupts. But it would be dangerous if the volcano could be erupted easily. That's probably why they made a door that only reacts to a special kind of energy and put the switch in a place that's hard to reach. As you accumulate points with the pinball, the energy ball gets charged up and opens the door. Yeah, I figured the device was something like that, since the volcano erupted after I cleared the thing. But why was it designed with a pinball? That's not exactly clear, but maybe it was just a playful idea on the part of whoever developed it. Engineers tend to be like that. Like, uh, who knows, maybe it might happen until 2025, we're not exactly 100% sure, despite the fact that in 2025, it's gonna most likely gonna be focusing on the 40th anniversary of the Super Mario Bros. game franchise, as far as I'm usually concerned with that point. But then again, time will tell, especially we're still on 2023 right now, so, 
Anyways, though, with that being said, though, there are some uh, great news we'd like to point things out. Is that, potentially speaking out, I was going to say that it looks like the N Nintendo Switch sales numbers have been updated ever since in, let's just say, about a few days ago, specifically since on the 7th of November, so that's roughly about, uh, let's just say, nine days ago now. So because of that, well, I'm happy to report is that the Nintendo Switch sales, specifically of how much units has been sold so far, as in the forms of by the end of September in during the forms of 2023, is that the Nintendo Switch has been sold for about 132 0.46 million units, so it's almost barely caught up for the likes of not only for its Nintendo DS, but also say applies with the PlayStation 2 as well. Maybe they're miles able to do a next update on that until specifically until February next year. So yeah, I was expecting for that. So yeah, pretty cool, even though it does have barely amount of numbers, but regards to such though. I honestly don't mind, especially considering for the fact that, well, in addition to that, uh, certain uh, Switch software, at least as far as I'm concerned, also has been updated. Specifically, well, nothing different for the sake of the forms of the top 10 uh, best Switch game sales, but as far as I'm concerned, quite a few games have recently been updated for its sales numbers. Well, first of all, I just want to get this out of the way for the top 10 best Switch game sales as of now, which, I suppose, generally speaking, is that, well, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still on top, usually, relatively speaking, because of the forms of DLC and stuff like that. And so far, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is actually now on 57.1 million copies sold, which is pretty insane. Especially considering for the fact that that is without a doubt, it still is the best-selling Mario Kart game ever, which is very understandable, just because you can play the game on the go, but also, DLCs now exist, so I can totally see why. Despite the fact that the actual Wave 6, uh, Wave 6 doesn't exist yet, until specifically, whenever we, uh, find out some more details about that particular topic, until, you know, next year's February, so... But I digress. So, uh, meanwhile, for Animal Crossing New Horizons, it's still on second place, and so far it's now on 43.38 million copies sold. So, getting quite there, but nowhere near as much as the forms of how it does it for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, at least in my opinion. But regardless of such, though, it's still doing pretty well. And, uh, also, third place is still Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and relatively speaking, it's now on. 32.44 million copies sold. So, not on the subject at this point, is that on fourth place is still The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and in fact, no matter what though, is actually now on 31.15 million copies sold, and it's almost caught up for third place to beat out Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is insane. And on top of that, I believe 5th place is still Super Mario Odyssey, like as a result it's now on 26.95 million copies sold, and in addition to that, uh, Pokemon Sword slash Shield is now on 26.2 uh, million copies sold, so it's almost caught up to the forms of Super Mario Odyssey, and in addition to that, 7th place goes to, presumably speaking, both Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet, and I believe they are now on 23.23 .23 million copies sold. So, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting, to say the least. And in addition to that, Super Mario Party is now on 19.66 million copies sold. So it's almost 20 million copies. So, gee, it's actually getting pretty close, kind of thing about it. And in addition to that, um, it looks like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is still on 10th place position right now, especially considering that that game is still selling pretty well at this point, especially it's now on 16.70 million copies sold. And in addition to that, um, it looks like that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has actually been updated for Switch sales numbers, specifically, uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is now on 19.50 million copies sold, so it's actually doing really, really dang well, especially considering for a fact, well, for some reason, a lot of people seem to able to find the game a bit repetitive now, which I honestly disagree, because mainly because... Don't you think I could 
could have been more helpful to Sonic if I had my normal body back? For sure. In this digitized state, there's a limit to how much we can affect the real world. There may be ways to help from cyberspace, like how we combined our powers to turn Sonic back to normal. That's true. There must be things only we can do in this form. Well, honestly, I just got no words of the reason why a lot of people seem to find uh, Tears of the Kingdom felt a bit too repetitive, which I'm not exactly sure why that is. Maybe because of their preference, I guess, or perhaps even maybe because the forms of their game tired of the, of the forms of uh, uh, certainly exactly the same identical um, objectives or something. Although, don't get me wrong, I still had a fun time playing Tears of the Kingdom, but I still haven't gone back into the game since uh, a couple of months ago, mainly because of the forms of I need to complete certain Switch games up to this point. Specifically, you know what I'm saying with WarriorWare Move It, so as a result, I've only got the last few uh, micro games left until I've basically done everything for WarriorWare Move It before I move along to the next uh, WarriorWare game I do need to complete. Fully 100% by the way, and as a result, it appears to be WarriorWare Get It Together. Now, I thought it was a little bit weird, is that a WarriorWare move it does never utilizes the actual coin currency, unlike the forms of how it does it on Get It Together and Gold, which both of those games utilizes the actual gold coins as currency, so you can able to actually buy something out of it or something like that. So, but either way, though, that's as far as I can usually say about that, I guess. So, but again, I'm probably not going to give away any spoilers for the sake of the forms of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, despite the fact that that game has been out for about, uh, let's just say, um, six months ago or something like that. So, yeah, I can't believe time flies, you know. Especially because of the forms of how the fact that, well, been busy playing a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff these days, which I suppose that's a good thing, mind you, just because I had a lot of fun playing the Nintendo Switch throughout the years, since in 2017, and all that stuff. So, anyways though, back into what we are saying about the forms of certain uh, Switch game sales has been recently been updated, and those games are not only Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, but also Mario Party Superstars, and finally, Nintendo Switch Sports. Which as a result, um, for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, it's now on to 12.58 million copies sold. So it's actually doing pretty well, and meanwhile, for Mario Party Superstars, finally gets its uh, Switch sales update, and now it appears to be it's now on 11.44 million copies sold, so it seems that the Switch sales for Mario Party games is still doing really, really dang well. Even way up there than the forms of how it does it on the previous games like 9, Island Tour, 10, Star Rush, the Top 100, you know the rest. So, but even then though, I fully managed able to actually finally be uh, super proud for the sake of the forms of both of those Mario Party games on the Switch. Speaking of something related to Mario Party though, I could imagine for the fact that if the next Mario Party game will be exist, for the sake of the forms of the third and the final installment for the brand new Mario Party game on the Switch or something, I could imagine for the fact that one of those voice actors who were able to actually voice not only Mario, but also Luigi, Wario, as well as Waluigi, I could imagine for the fact that Kevin's voice will be on there, so because of that, It'll be pretty strange, kind of thinking about it, but I'm sure it will pretty much get out able to reuse the exactly same clips as the new forms of, or certain voice clips, for not just by the forms of, uh, maybe Super Mario Bros. Wonder, or maybe WarriorWare Move It or something? Well, time will tell, especially concerning for the fact that we've almost nearly at the end of, uh, 2023, before we move on to the, potentially speaking, one of the greatest years to come, which is 2024. But then again, no, we'll have to able to save that conversation once we're able to actually get onto it with the forms of 2024 as a result. So, anyway, so it looks like we scanned another Coco map, so we can potentially try to able to activate the switch, so just in case we can get the heck out of here. And I think we'll go ahead and meet up with, uh, another character interaction coming up, so because of that, I just want to get this out of the way before we do anything else. There's so much happening on this 
island. It's beyond my comprehension. It all seems like magic to me. Hmm. Here's a word of advice. A scientist shouldn't explain things using the word magic. It's true, there are many things that can't be explained with our current knowledge. The ancients were a technologically advanced civilization. Everything we've seen is nothing more than phenomena that were common at the time. I assure you, there is no such thing as magic on this island. Just you watch. I will uncover the truth behind everything. Oh, and also I realized is that the Starfall Plus did somehow activate before I have a conversation with Dr. Eggman, so... Yeah, kind of a uh, cool coincidence, I guess, especially concerning for the fact that, well, I must admit the right away. I apologize for my awkward commentary sometimes, but that's just mainly because, no matter what, though, I was expecting to be able to mention something else, but uh, either way, let's just get back onto the forms of the conversation about the forms of the updated uh, Switch game sales. So, like I mentioned this before, is that Mario Party Superstars is actually doing super dang well for its sales numbers, and when it comes to Nintendo Switch Sports, um, apparently that game has been sold for about 10.77 million copies sold, so it's actually doing pretty decently for the sake of the forms of certain sales for that regard, and newest in the lineup, which appears to be body forms of, what else? Pikmin 4. So, how well does Pikmin 4 get its high expectations for its, uh, game sales? Well, as it turns out, Pikmin 4 has now on to become, uh, 2.61 million copies sold. So, it actually is, without a doubt, one of the greatest selling Pikmin games of all time. So, because of that, I don't usually count Pikmin 3 Deluxe, though, because it's just basically a port to a Wii U game. But, relatively speaking, though, at least it's actually doing pretty dang well. But I suppose no matter what though, strangest of them all though, they've never actually mentioned something related to both Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 as in the actual digital version, to be more specifically when it comes to the actual sales numbers. Well, maybe they'll try to mention more about it, um, until specifically later down the road, I'm not exactly 100% sure. I mean, mind you, no matter what though, much like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I haven't exactly got back into Pikmin 4 just yet. Mainly because I do need to get some bit of practice of the forms of the combat, and especially noticeable with the forms of how in fact no matter what though, I'm being over-exaggerated by playing a lot, I mean a lot, of Mario and Sonic stuff, because you know what I'm saying, I'm a huge Mario and Sonic fan, just because both of those mascots are, are very iconic to me though, so... Plus, they're pretty simple to able to actually get a grasp with, so... And that's the skill points for Knuckles, but hopefully we will be back for that if we manage to able to fill up the entire map first, so it makes things a little bit more easier to able to actually do fast travels and stuff like that, so... Hopefully that should be the case, so... And I suppose that's pretty much as far as we can say it in terms of the forms of the updated uh, Nintendo Switch sales. I mean, it's not by much, but hopefully by that time until next February in 2024, while they able to actually establish the forms of that particular uh, Switch update sales for the sake of the forms of until December 2023, hopefully we're able to see some more mentioning about the forms of the actual uh, Switch game sales for not just by the forms of maybe potentially Super Mario Bros. Wonder and WarioWare Move It, if that seems to be the case, and of course, Super Mario RPG Remake. So, I'm, re I'm very curious to know how well does these games were about to sell, so because of that, Hopefully we'll find out more details about that, like we said this before, until February 2024, so... But I digress. Oh, and another thing too, is that potentially speaking though, is that for what I found out, apparently, they're gonna be ending things off for not just by the forms of one of those iconic, uh, gags for one of the series in particular, but also is that they're gonna be ending off uh, one of those games in particular that is no longer going to be able to be existence, not just by the forms of the physical version, but also the digital version as well. I suppose we should probably get started actually with the forms of that particular. Another discussion I want to point things out is that apparently they're about to be able to get ourselves a nice little surprise collaboration with Disney and Pixar, which as a result, the game called uh, Rocket League, apparently they're about to be able to invite Lightning McQueen from Cars as a playable character. So because of that, I almost first thought, 
Okay, that's a bit weird. They're able to actually have Lightning McQueen as a playable character in Rocket League. And yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen exactly. Let me know in the comments down below. So, because I never actually played uh, Rocket League before. But I definitely heard about it. But I've never actually played it that often. So, because of that, I've got no comments to say about it. So, anyways though. Uh, let's talk about the forms of some unfortunate news to discuss. Is that, potentially speaking though, like I said before. Not only we somehow finished off the forms of every single aspect of one of those. Well... Let's get started for one by one, for the sake of the forms of this unfortunate news to discuss, is that ever since enduring the forms of certain episodes for The Simpsons recently, you know with the forms of season 35, well, as it turns out, the usual uh, gag, specifically, you know when uh, Homer Simpson just always strangles Bart, every time when Bart did something a bit nasty, or say something a little bit more inappropriate, basically though, that, that particular... Uh, strangler station is no longer going to exist so because of that it does manage to be able to lose its charm but regardless of such though i think the reason why they have to do this is because the righteous has been changed or perhaps even maybe it'd be something else but i really do miss the old days where they basically do like a funny uh gag for the sake of the forms of the simpsons so yeah it's actually pretty sad as far as, far as to see that go away so I mean, relatively speaking, though, it's just about the fact that uh, when I attempt able to watch The Simpsons, of course, obviously, despite the fact that we haven't exactly seen anything, for the sake of the forms of the uh, season 35, well, that's just mainly because we've now recently got season 34 on Disney Plus. So because of that, relatively speaking, though, it seems pretty sad to see that gag go. So speaking of going away. It's that one of those games in particular, and I apologize for that particular mispronunciation of that particular game's title, by the way. And that's what appears to be by the forms of Taiko no Tachinjin, uh, Drum and Fun. Apparently, though, that game is going to be delisted, not just by the forms of the Switch eShop, but also, get this, they're no longer going to be able to do the physical copies of the game after five years since when it first came out, since in 2018, I mean, what is this, Super Mario 3D All-Stars all over again? Except the noticeable difference has been, is that it's going to happen until the 30th of November. So we've naturally got about, uh, let's just say, two weeks left until specifically that game will be uh, delisted. Or, relatively speaking, though, it most likely is going to affect not just by the forms of the American version, but also with the UK version, or the European version, and heck, even with the Japanese version as well. So as a result, the news will not only affect the Switch uh, eShop, but the physical version as well. So yeah, it is very similar to Super Mario 3D All-Stars problem, so because of that, uh, Bandai Namco says it will no longer be selling the game, in stores. However, if you brought it previously, since in 2018, all the way up to the beginning of 2023, uh, basically though, it will continue to work, both the physical and digital versions. So because of that, unfortunately though, Bandai Namco doesn't really explain uh, the decision. The company simply thanked fans for their support and kindly asked uh, for your understanding in this matter so you can check out the full notice for yourself as been posted on social media so because of that yeah that's kind of an upsetting emotional bit by the way despite the fact that i haven't exactly played that game either and unfortunately though there's also the last bad news we want to discuss upon is that potentially speaking though do you guys even know uh, ever since in Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link Let's Play so far, that Silver did accidentally say that uh, technically we do seem able to have Mummy Knuckles as a yet another playable character in Sonic Dash. Well, as it turns out, we did somehow realize about the fact that Silver was entirely wrong about it. Especially concerning for the fact that, unfortunately though, this is why, this is why, that I'm essentially going to be giving up playing, uh, not only for the sake of the forms of Mario Kart Tour, as I've already explained about this earlier, but also I somehow give up playing Sonic Dash, mainly because of this very annoying factor, and as of course, 
The stupid godforsaken character card requirements in order to able to not only level up your character, but also just try to unlock certain characters as well. And because of that, yeah, I just seriously do not like the character card system. Like, as a result, it just makes the entire process of unlocking characters a lot more tedious, and on top of that, I just found it not fun, unlike the forms of how it does on these character tokens, because to me, Character token events is actually a lot funner in my opinion. I mean, sure, it can take a very long time to able to grab them all, likely 1,000 and stuff like that. But the problem I have with the forms of the character card system on the most recent updates for Sonic Dash these days is that not only because it's very tedious, but it's also very luck-based, especially concerning for the fact that I swear we were expecting to able to actually grab certain amounts of those uh, character cards as Mummy Knuckles or Treasure Hunter Knuckles, not just simply just like, well, we've gone some little progression just because there is no way we're about to able to guarantee to able to collect the insane amount of these exactly the same character cards as to be expected. But then again, like I mentioned earlier, it's incredibly luck based because you never know you're about to be able to be collecting uh, most of those specific character cards as well as advertised for certain character events as far as I'm concerned. And relatively speaking though, yeah, unfortunately though, I give up on this process, especially because concerning that, luckily we still managed able to keep the actual iCloud save data, so at least nothing else has been lost. So it's just that... Oh god, I'm just getting so done with defaults that stupid character card system. Like, it, it just feels like the way you're able to obtain them, it's just, it's not that fun. There's, not my, there's nothing else I can usually just try to able to say about it, aside from the fact that we're just basically not going to able to touch on that game for quite some time at this point. So, yeah, I do apologize for this point, especially concerning for the fact that I do have a fun time playing Sonic Dash still, after 10 years since when it first came out. I mean, it's just that with that stupid update that it just ruins my unlocking character system, and it's even bad enough, you also need to utilize the character cards in order to able to level up your character and your ring count as well. So because of that, oh my god, why did they mess things up with the system? Ah, <sighs> honestly, I'm much rather happy go back on to the character token events rather than the character cards because my god, you come across into the identical ones as you've already unlocked certain characters with. Mind you, I've already maxed out the actual level ups for certain characters, but not all of them, just because some of them you can't level up, like for instance, I was expecting to try to fully level up uh, Pac-Man, but I was too late, mainly because I don't think there was actually a way we can able to level up not only Pac-Man, but also sort of certain other characters as well, like Red and Chuck and uh, Bomb, and especially noticeable with the forms of, oh by the way, those three characters as I mentioned uh, earlier, they are entirely based on Angry Birds Epic, so I just want to classify that. So, but as far as everything else goes, honestly, there's not much else I can say, so but even then, I've already explained things well enough as it is, but uh, at least on the upside is that the Switch is still doing really, really well. In terms of not only the Switch units, but also in terms of software as far as this is concerned. So, yeah, well done for the sake of the forms of continuing the support for the Nintendo Switch sales numbers. So, I can appreciate for the fact that it looks like the Switch is actually doing super dang strong, at least ever since back in 2017, when it was firstly introduced during that time. Especially concerning for the fact that until next year's March, it all marks the 7th year anniversary of the Nintendo Switch existence. So, yeah, we would love to be able to actually celebrate for that, until specifically on the 3rd of March in 2024. So because of that, yeah, time will tell, so either way. Oh, and then also another thing I want to classify for mentioning about this as well, is that potentially speaking though, do you guys even remember during the forms of in the previous video, is that I did predict it that obviously with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, with the, the Nintendo Switch OLED bundle, well, as it turns out, it actually became true. So because of that, it was expecting to be marketing as the forms of Black Fridays, I'm pretty sure. So relatively speaking, I was apart from the fact that I'm sure a lot of people were desperately weren't able to get 
the Nintendo Switch after all. So concerning for the fact that you can pretty much expect Able to get the bundle with not only with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but also with the forms of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, well, as in likely results in during the forms of Double uh, or different bundles, as far as I'm concerned. So, relatively speaking, though, I can totally see why between both Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, including uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons for its, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch Lite bundles, and especially noticeable with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, because concerning for the fact that I believe those three titles combined will sell tremendously. So because of that, yeah, I can totally see why, for the fact that a lot of people are desperately want to get the Nintendo Switch right now, concerning for the fact that maybe for saving up for its Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So we can fully appreciate about that particular, well, things worth noting for. So, but yeah, that's as far as we can able to talk about. I suppose the last thing I want to discuss upon is that I also no longer have myself uh, Sonic Boom Dash 2, or should I say, Sonic Dash 2 Sonic Boom, mainly because this, this is where the point where the fact that I'm starting to able to lose interest in with the actual mobile games. Like, I did have some fun times, don't get me wrong, with the forms of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and especially noticeable maybe a little bit on Sonic 4 Episode 1, and maybe a little bit on Sonic 4 Episode 2, despite Episode 3 is basically cancelled because both of those games do not sell very well, and also the actual review's response is also not doing very, very well. So, understandably so, because they really messed up the physics and momentum and stuff like that. Oh, and say plus with the forms I've, I do somehow managed to able to enjoy. Watching certain cutscenes for the likes of Z uh, Kingdom Hearts, Union Cross, and, relatively speaking, some My Little Pony games. But, no one near as fun compared to the forms of how it does it, what I sort of pretty much used to playing the Nintendo Switch a lot more, just because, you know, I played a thing on the go. Despite the fact that we do need to be able to incorporate with the forms of some charging at one point. And also you do realize I somehow stuck on this puzzle, which hopefully I'll try to sort that out at some point whenever I go back into this. Like I said before, until two weeks time. So for now, let's go and use that particular little plain mech ever since in Sonic Adventure 2 to able to actually boost our way to the forms of our next destination we're about to be hit off to next. So... Seriously, the only thing I do love about Tails though, is that once you do able to have yourselves your maximum rings capacity, likely results in journey forms of 400 rings, is that you can easily manage to able to skip certain portions if you can tell, which to me, that particular part itself is always super duper handy, especially concerning if I want to go after not only certain skill points, but also with the forms of certain map navigations as well. So because of that, now I'm pretty sure we've almost done with the forms of the map navigations, I'm pretty sure. So relatively speaking, though, it's about the fact that by that time until that time comes, we can expect able to actually completely done everything in terms of map scanning. So because of that, there are a couple of exceptions for here and there, but that again, though, we'll save those in a later time. So for now, let's go ahead and deal with this last character conversation for the sake of today. And hopefully we'll do the rest of it later, so Miles Prower. If you and the doctor combine your intellect. I wouldn't mind, but I don't know if Dr. Eggman would be willing. You two are at odds with one another, yet you would cooperate with him? Of course. I couldn't answer that on Chaos Island, but now I'm ready to decide for myself. But yeah, with that being said though, I suppose we're going to have to end things off at this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers. Is that, potentially speaking though, like I said before, we will try our best if we're able to actually just decide able to finish up the last of one of those Coco map scannings, if you can tell. In addition to that, we also decided able to complete the last few island challenges, and I'm hopefully, hopefully though, we're able to actually complete those as well. And in addition to that, we also decided able to take control of Sonic again, so just in case we can able to actually eventually tackle through the Cypress space segments from time to time, and everything else for that resides. So, yeah, I will see you guys until, like I said before, two weeks time. So with that said, later fellas.